Well, following the European parliamentary elections, Poland's civic coalition now stands as the second biggest EPP delegation in the European Parliament after the German CDU slash CSU. Having the largest representation, the Germans have held most EPP positions, including heading four out of nine committees in the European Commission. Also last night over dinner in Brussels, the EU's 27 national leaders discussed who should run the powerful European Commission executive body, who should chair their European Council meetings and who should take the post of foreign policy chief. Now joining us right now to talk about the EU is Michał Matlak, policy advisor at European Parliament. Good evening. Thank you very much for joining us. Good evening. So we have a lot to talk about, I would say. However, I would like to start with the recent spat between um, Prime Minister Tusk's, Tusk and EPP's President, uh, Mr. Weber. Now, um, like we said, um, the Civic Coalition, right after German, um, German Party, is the largest national delegation in the European People's Party. So it seems logical that they would like to choose their own deputy president and Prime Minister Tusk did choose that person and was it's supposed to be Andrzej Halicki. However, Mr. Weber disagreed and wants to have Eva Kopacz, former Prime Minister of Poland, as the uh, deputy president. Now, his argument is this officially, uh, officially Weber's point is that according to the regulations, there must be a sufficient number of women, hence the name of the former Polish Prime Minister. Now, is this a good argument? I mean, shouldn't we look at the merits and what the party as a whole wants um, instead of, um, you know, how many women hold any positions? <clears throat> uh, above all, I think that it's a, it's a real argument. Uh, it, that, that's how these things are seen in Brussels and people treat, uh, you know, g gender equality seriously. So, so I think that that's the, the, the real reason. But uh, I, I wouldn't speak of a spat uh, I think that, that it was a, a genuine kind of a, a lack of communication because if I understand correctly uh, Andrzej Halicki is now the candidate for the EPP uh, vice presidency and uh, I don't think that this will be a reason of a major a conflict between uh, Polish and German delegation within the EPP the, the rule for sure be negotiations regarding uh, important uh, positions in the European Parliament, uh, especially the, the, the committees. But uh, I don't think that this uh, um, the, the, the events that we are talking about today uh, are an kind of an example of a, of, a, of, a, of a problem between between both delegations. So it's already DPP. resolved. It's resolved. Okay, great. Excellent. Well, that's good to hear. Now, uh, moving on, as you, you, you mentioned, the key posts in, in the EU that yet need to be filled. And we know there was a, a, a closed door uh, meeting uh, between senior EU leaders uh, on Monday. Now, imagine you were a fly on the wall. What do you think might have been discussed? Um. Well, we know more or less what, what was discussed. Uh, I mean, not, not all the details, but but uh, uh, most of them. Uh, first of all, we know more or less who are the main candidates. So the Ursula von der Leyen is a the candidate for the European Commission presidency. Antonio Costa is the candidate uh, for socialists for the uh, European Council presidency. Um, von der Leyen, of, of course, is obviously representing the, the EPP. Uh, Kaja Kallas, uh, Prime Minister of Estonia, is, is, is candidate of Liberals, the Renew Europe group, uh, for the position of a high uh, representative. So this is clear. Uh, one of the reasons why the agreement was not uh, finalized is that the EPP PP uh, proposed uh, a, a solution that would somehow uh, um, acknowledge the, the victory of the EPP and would give them uh, a two point f uh, two and a half years of, uh, uh, of, of 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 the European Council presidency, uh, which means that you know the, the this position will, will be shared, not like it was in the case of uh, Donald Tusk or um, Charles Michel, but it would be shared. Uh, between the socialists and the EPP, uh, so that's 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 uh, one of the main reasons of of, of this agreement. But uh, in the previous years, it, it 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 took really much longer to for the leaders to agree. So it's a completely normal um, uh, procedure, if if I may uh, say so. And uh, I, I we'll see what will happen next week uh, on Thursday and Friday. But uh, I don't expect. Uh, 
uh, this to be impossible to solve the, the, mm -hmm. the, these problems. These are, these are normal negotiations. Well, but but yeah, I mean, we know the, uh, the names of the candidates and uh, the vote is behind the closed door. So really, we, we don't know what is going to happen. When you look at the math, when it comes to Ursula von der Leyen, it also seems obvious that she might be um, voted for. But, um, but you don't expect any surprises when it comes to these names? I mean, could anything change? It obviously could change, uh, mm -hmm. um, but I, I don't think it's likely at the moment. So the, the, the Ursula von der Leyen's position is, is stronger than it was before the elections because the EPP uh, was more successful than we expected. Uh, we'll see uh, kind of what will be the result of the negotiations between her or the possible winner of the of the kind of the nominee of the European Council and the European Parliament uh, groups because that's yet another step. Uh, but um, I, 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 would, I wouldn't expect uh, any any big surprises here. Uh, with Antonio Costa, as, as he's facing some legal problems in, in Portugal, I think that Prime Minister Tusk uh, mentioned that this should be kind of it, it should be clear that that these problems will not be a burden for him. Uh, but if I understand correctly, that's more or less what, what, what happened or what is happening. Uh, so so is he still the main candidate? If not him, then another candidate uh, for this post to the president of the European Council is Enrico Letta, former prime minister of um, uh, Italy. Uh, as for, for the other posts, uh, there are some kind of rumors that, that countries that are kind of less critical uh, uh, of Russia, like Slovakia, for example, are not very happy about Kaya Kallas, but it doesn't seem that a country like Slovakia could block uh, this 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 choice. Another candidate that was, that was uh, mentioned a few days ago or a few weeks ago was uh, Mario Draghi, so another former prime minister of uh, Italy, who was quite close to uh, the prime minister uh, Meloni, even if they come from very different camps. But it doesn't seem very likely that that he could be the candidate of the he was the candidate for the position of the, the president of the council. But it doesn't mm -hmm. seem likely that 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 that, that it's him. Now, we also mentioned Estonian Prime Minister Kaya Kalas, and she is in line to be nominated um, High Representative for Foreign Affairs. How significant do you think this will be for, for this region? Uh, the, the, the fact that uh, uh, someone from our region uh, uh, is a high representative is very important, I think, because that, that's, that, that's, a, that's a key role uh, which uh, connects both the um, uh, kind of the, the competences of the European Commission and the European Council, because that, that's, a, that, that's a position, or the Council of Ministers, that's the position between the, the kind of intergovernmental body of the EU and the, and the supranational one. Uh, so, 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 so it is indeed very important. High representative is seen as a key person uh, when it comes to, to European foreign policy and, and also security policy. Uh, we'll see what, what will what will happen with the Commissioner for, for Defence, but uh, it will definitely strengthen the 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 region, it will definitely uh, help uh, uh, strengthen the voice of our region when it comes to formulating of, of, of our response towards Russia, and 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 when it comes to, to kind of to, to keeping the, the 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 support for Ukraine. Okay, well, well, zooming out from the key post for just a second, um, the, the European parliamentary uh, elections have. Uh, resulted in quite a fragmented uh, parliament and we, we expect coalitions to be formed both on the left and the right and we already have heard uh, rumours of quite unlikely bedfellows actually in those coalitions. How do you see uh, the, the, the coalitions actually uh, uh, you know, gelling, uh, becoming, becoming uh, permanent and, and are they workable in your opinion? Uh, I mean, there, there are two options when it comes to, to coalitions. I think in the parliament, uh, one is the kind of the classical one, meaning meaning the one that we had in the last term. So, so this will be the coalition of uh, uh, Renew Europe, Liberals, the EPP, the biggest party, the centre right party, and the uh, and the Socialists. That's the most likely uh, coalition. They have a majority, so so they don't even need, need Greens. There was a fear that they would need another party, but uh, it's not the case. Uh, the other option, uh, which is um, still a, an imaginary one, because I don't, I, I don't think there are there are votes, kind of, the, the, there are there are enough MEPs to support it, but. Uh, Theoretically, it could function. This is the coalition of, of, of the center right with the hard right. 
So the, it would have to be the, the EPP, the uh, ECR, uh, so, so the, the conservatives where Polish uh, peace uh, belongs, uh, and also the Prime Minister Meloni, uh, and the uh, ID, uh, so the, the group Identity and Democracy, so a group uh, even further uh, to the right. Uh, and I'd say it's very unlikely. First of all, they don't have the enough uh, seats in the parliament uh, to, to have the majority. And then, uh, but, but then there is one, one more thing that I wanted to tell you. Um, I think that unfortunately this could change uh, if Marine Le Pen uh, wins the election in France, because that, that would strengthen the, the role of the, of, of the far right. I think that then uh, this, this scenario could be reconsidered, although, 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 although I don't think that it's uh, uh, likely. Uh, the last thing I wanted to mention is that we have to remember that coalitions in the European Parliament are different than coalitions in the uh, in the national politics, because it's true that the, the biggest parties, uh, if they form a coalition, they agree who becomes a president of the Parliament uh, for the next uh, uh, two and a half uh, years, uh, uh, but um, for the next five years, but these are two people because the, the term is, is, is Cut into two. Uh, so, so in this, in, our, in, the, in the next, uh, in the next uh, term, it will most likely be Roberta Mazzola for the two and a half years, and then a, a socialist for for another uh, two and a half years. Uh, and then the, there is a decision regarding the most important posts. But when it comes to the uh, um, regulations and, and, and the votes, we, we we cannot talk about a coalition because every file might have a different majority. So so we might see, as you said, kind of uh, exotic coalitions sometimes uh, behind various uh, files. But that's how that's how it works in, in the European Parliament. Right. OK, just very quickly in the last few seconds that we have left, sir. Um, so, so are we overall, however the coalitions actually uh, uh, come together, are we going to see overall a slight shift to the right uh, in EU parliamentary policy? Yes, I think so. First of all, we already uh, saw that in the last term, and I think that yes, we, the, the, that, that's the the, the the preferences when it comes to the MEPs uh, uh, changed, not radically, but they changed, and I expect that especially when we when we, when we speak of of climate and migration, uh, there will be an attempt to to, to move uh, to, 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 towards the right. I think that these are the most important policies for the right, where they can find allies also in the in the EPP. So I would expect that, that yes, on that policy, on these policies, the, the, the parliament will shift uh, to the mm -hmm. right. Well, you said exotic coalitions. I think that's something to look forward from the journalist's um, perspective. Absolutely. L lots to dig into there. For sure. Uh, Michał Matlak, policy advisor at the European Parliament. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. Thank you, Thank you very much. As you, as you can see, it's, it's raining in Brussels. I, I didn't even know that. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that well, you should come to Warsaw. It's warm here and dry. <laughs> uh, yes, exactly, exactly, exactly. So, Good night. Good night. Thank, Thank you. you.